Even if we design the best possible dialogues with conversational markers, implicit confirmation and differentiate between beginners and pros, there's still the possibility of errors. And once you try your first voice assistant with other people, you'll be surprised how many issues you will find in the dialogue and how often your voice assistant will fail. So what's the deal with errors in voice assistants? If we as humans have a conversation, it's so that we are really excellent at recovering from errors. If something is misunderstood, it's natural to clarify again. And we all make a lot of grammatical errors as we speak, or longer breaks in the middle of sentences with R. Uh. The problem is, computers are not very good at recovering from errors. They can't do that by themselves. You need to pre-plan for pretty much every error that can occur. What are the most common mistakes in voice user interfaces? The easiest is that no speech is detected or the user's response is not recognized because of a loud background noise. That's usually easy to handle. You can simply reprompt. For Alexa skills, you can reprompt the user once. If there's still no answer, the skill will be closed for privacy reasons. But for formulating the reprompt, it's important to think about what could have happened. Maybe the user is gone. Maybe somebody had to rush away from the conversation because the pot in the kitchen was overheating. But your skill can't wait for the user to return. Equally difficult is what to do if the user doesn't know what to respond. This is frequently happening. In one of my own research projects, where we used Alexa for the elderly, they just needed more time than the default eight seconds to think of the answer. However, for privacy reasons, the voice assistants usually don't wait longer. So try to formulate a clear question so that users know what they can say. Another potential issue is that the voice assistant recognizes what the user said, but the user's choice is not something your service can handle. For example, in a sports skill, you can formulate a rather open question like, what would you like to do? The user then responds with, I'd like to play polo. However, this is not something your service supports right now. Your reprompt could be, sorry, I didn't get that. What would you like to do? However, that's not really helpful to users. They would most likely simply repeat the query as they are not aware of why this happened. So it's better to be more focused in the reprompt, for example, by specifying the available options. For example, sorry, I didn't, I can't do this right now. Would you like to play soccer or golf? A third common mistake is that the artificial intelligence is recognized the user's response but in a wrong way. For example, the user says, set the alarm in 10 minutes. With implicit confirmation, the voice assistant then replies, okay, setting your alarm in 10 hours. So it understood hours instead of minutes. You should provide a way to correct that. If the user next says, change that, the skill shouldn't ask, what should I change? But instead know what the last action was and that the user is likely referring back to that. But these were just the most common errors. In the talk, in conversation, there are no errors from the Google I.O. conference. They have a good overview of the many things that can go wrong. For example, there can be side speech, somebody else talking while you're starting your command. If you have children, this will frequently happen. Instead of answering the voice assistant's question, the user could ask a question back. Humans also frequently self-correct themselves in a sentence. For example, I'd like to order four donuts. No, make that five. It's really difficult to understand for a computer. In all of those real life conditions, it's important that you don't blame the user. Find a different way to formulate the response. What's actually based on rather old research from Kreis in 1975 is the cooperative principle. We humans, have that more or less built in. Otherwise, our conversations would not work. And of course, the same principles apply to voice user interfaces as well. One of the main issues is the quantity of information you give. It should be as much as necessary, but neither too little nor too much. For example, if you have a party planner skill and the user asks, do you know who's coming to the party? A perfectly correct answer of your skill would be yes. 
But if you cooperate in a conversation, that's not the answer the user expects. Instead, your user would like to hear something like, yes, Marianne and Christoph will be coming. So giving a too short answer is not always helpful. But the same applies in the other direction. If your skill asks, how many people are coming to the party? And the user's response with, it's my wife and myself. That's probably not what you coded your skill to recognize. You are expecting a number, for example, to order the correct number of pizzas. If the user's answer isn't what you expected, a good clarifying follow-up question could be, sorry, how many was that? That makes it clear that the user ex is expected to give you the count, but at the same time doesn't blame the user. By far the most important takeaway message when thinking about a voice user interface is make sure it's easier than the alternative. Some tasks are very well suited for smart speakers. Others are not. There is no point in building a complete photo editing software with only a voice user interface. However, it can make much sense to do a medical patient education via a voice assistant instead of handing patients a printed sheet. It's easier to learn in a well-designed conversation, voice skills are easier to translate to different languages, and keep in mind that not everyone is proficient in reading. Here a voice assistant can be much more accessible, inclusive and emphatic than a written text. How do you evaluate how good a voice user interface is? I've collected two papers to get you started. At our university, we have developed a lot of voice assistants in the past few years and also created many other good examples for evaluation, which are, for example, accessible through various master theses of our students.